Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our first Twitter chat. I am Carolina Tateda, and I'm the host of this Twitter talk show. This is a four part series dedicated to e learning, where we will introduce a chat with guests, including teachers, parents, students, and industry leaders, to talk about e learning, what it is, and what it is not. Over the next four weeks, guests will join our moderator, Dr. Mac Michael Canuel, CEO of Learn to Chat about e learning. We, you will also be uh, in company of our technical director, Rob Costain. Hi, Rob. Um, so basically, we would like for you to follow our hashtag and it's important to use our hashtag eLearnEdChat whenever you reply to our questions. So remember to reply with A1, A2, A3, and so on and so forth, our hashtag. Sound good? Ready to join in? Michael, are you ready to get this chat started? I'm ready. So let's start with our first question. All right, um, so we're being asked to introduce ourselves and uh, who we are. So let me just give a, a quick little background as to who I am. I'm the CEO of LEARN. I'm also the co-founder of the Canadian eLearning Network. I'm also the designer and uh, implementer for uh, BrainCloud, a uh, uh, blended learning program in Thailand. And uh, I've been working in the field of uh, online education for quite a while but not as long as LEARN. LEARN has been around um, since 1999, offering online classes to our educational community. Um, and along the way, we've garnered a number of uh, awards and recognition uh, uh, from around the world. Uh, and it's really quite exciting that we, we hold this uh, particular position. We've been giving online classes to students uh, um, in all of our school boards, uh, uh, right from the island of Montreal to uh, uh, the far reaches of the lower north shore of, uh, of uh, Quebec. So uh, we've been doing this for quite a while and having a, a good time doing it. Um, we're going to talk really today and, and the whole series about uh, how online courses can be effective and engaging. And this particular Twitter chat today is going to try to reflect a little bit of what should be going on in our online classes and how we can make them effective. Now, if you were good students, good little doobies, um, you actually read the blog that was supposed to be the introduction to this uh, uh, Twitter chat. If you didn't, it's not serious, we'll, we'll work around it. But typically what we're doing is we're gonna flip our class and this Twitter chat is actually gonna be like an online class. So follow along and we'll see uh, how things work out. All right, we're ready to move to the next one. When you're teaching online, the first thing you've gotta do is you've gotta create a relationship. Now, this is true anywhere, anytime. Uh, you can't just walk into a, a classroom and start teaching if you don't have a creative relationship with your students. They're not going to engage. They're not going to uh, uh, be particularly interested. They want to know who's that person uh, who's guiding this class, who's teaching us. So, and, and it's good for the student, uh, rather for the teacher to know who are his students, who are the learners in the classroom. So the first thing to do is really to say, who are you? Uh, introduce yourself to your students. And so that's what I'm going to do right now. Who am I? In three simple words, I'm, I can think I'm an energetic person. I'm interested and I'm curious. And I'd like to know from Twitter, what, how, do, how would you describe yourself in, in three words? Who are you? What kind of a person uh, are you? Um, and that would be the, the first thing. So introduce yourself and tell me a little bit in, in a few words what you... Um, uh, how you see yourself. Now, as you're doing that, I'll, I'll start on and, and start talking about what is e-learning. And that's our, our second question. The first one was pretty easy. Eh? Who are you? Um, now, the second one is, uh, what is e-learning? Um, a lot of people th think they know, but uh, it's not that uh, uh, simple. In fact, um, many, many of the experts in this field don't really even agree on a, uh, a proper definition. But here's what I, I'm, I'm going to tell you is that E-learning is simply learning with an E in front of it. Now that's a Weisenheimer kind of comment. I know, ha uh, uh, ha uh, ha, uh, very funny. But really what I mean by that is that um, when we're in an online environment, we wanna do the same thing that we do in a regular classroom. We want our, our students to learn. We want them to move forward. The only difference is that in this particular case, we're augmenting it, um, supporting it with technology, with uh, digital resources um, and the internet. So in, in the broader uh, sense of all, all of this, 
e-learning falls into a, a large category called distance education, but it's much, much more than, than distance education. So when you think of e-learning, just think of it really as another way to learn another classroom, except that in the, instead of being in the physical uh, setting, you're in a virtual setting. Um, uh that's yep. great, Michael. Uh, actually, we have uh, our first comment on our tweet, uh, Twitter uh, account. Um, it comes from a high school teacher at the Sir Wilfrid Laurier School Board. Um, and uh, basically, they're asking, we moved to online learning on May 11th. I'd like to know how to get about teaching online effectively and without feeling exhausted. Thank you. Well, thank <laughs> you for this, uh, this comment. So let me start with the second half of Twitter. The, yeah. Let me, let me start with the second half of that question without getting exhausted. Uh, online teaching really requires a lot of preparation. Um, it requires a lot of time and attention. You have to really like a lot of things, get into the swing of it. You have to learn uh, a lot about it, but let me get through this particular presentation to start with, and maybe that'll, that'll help you. But uh, I wanna tell you that uh, like any good teaching, you need to do a lot of planning. You need to do a lot of organizing. It's not gonna happen. Uh, 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 without a lot of effort. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry to say it's, it's not easier than, than a regular classroom uh, setting. Uh, and it, it might even require a little more planning, but it opens up a lot of possibilities. So uh, let me uh, go through this and then, and, and we'll see if uh, I don't answer your question. Yeah, perfect, um, great. Now, in an online situation, as I was saying, you have to start by uh, creating a, a, um, a relationship with the, uh, with the learner. And, and I wanna do that right now with you by asking you to see if you can remember um, a situation similar to what I lived through when I started off in university and I was at Concordia University. I was in the hall building and I was taking my um, uh, first university chemistry class. And it was in the, I forget the name of the auditorium, big, big auditorium, 500, 600 people in it. And uh, like, I, most students at the time, they, they filled up the, the hall uh, from the, the back to the front. And way, way up in front, um, we saw um, the professor who had his uh, overhead projector and a, and a microphone. And uh, for an hour and a half, two hours, uh, twice a week, I think it was, he would um, lecture us. Um, and of course, we would scribble notes and we would take everything down. Um, and try to prepare for the uh, inevitable uh, tests that were going to be coming. Um, of course, uh, those of you who remember, who know Father Guido Sarducci from the Five Minute University on Saturday Night Live, you know that uh, five years later, I don't remember any, I didn't remember anything that I took in that class, um, simply because a talking head in any situation doesn't work. Poor pedagogy, whether it's in a brick and mortar class, um, is no better than poor pedagogy in an online uh, situation. Um, again, same thing when I was in high school, and I'm going again way back, um, I had a Latin teacher, Mr. Muir, fantastic guy, really liked him, but um, he taught us Latin. Now you can imagine grade nine boys, uh, an all boys school, uh, and we're being taught Latin. I don't remember uh, much, I remember a few catchphrases here and there, but it was as boring as, uh, as uh, can be. It was like washing paint dry, but that was poor pedagogy. That's the way things uh, were done at that time. And it's not to be critical, but um, poor pedagogy remains poor pedagogy. And I'm, I'm wondering amongst you, uh, you, those who are watching, how many of you know what I'm talking about? How many of you have uh, classrooms where the desks point to the front and uh, um, uh, you're lecturing at the kids, or maybe once upon a time when you were a student and you were being lectured. Um, teachers, when they're lecturing, don't really like lecturing that much generally, and students don't like it either. Um, but I'm wondering how many of you have, uh, recognize this particular kind of experience, because that's what I define in, in a broad sense here is, as poor pedagogy, and it doesn't matter where it happens. So, Michael, uh, our first uh, comment came from uh, GI Glow. Uh, we have a uh, second comment, a second reply to our uh, A1 question, our first question. It yeah. was from Peggy Drolle, online teacher, Math SN4. <laughs> I think I am caring, organized, and love to learn. So that's who she is, and that's how she introduces herself. So thanks, Pe Peggy, for joining in to our mm -hmm. Twitter chat. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Peggy. And, and I think what Peggy's describing is exactly what, I, what I'm trying to point out here is that Step one, you have to be 
uh, in the process. You have to work on creating a relationship, a connection with your, your learners, with your students. Um, before effective learning can happen, it doesn't matter if it's in a classroom or in an online setting, you've got to be able to do that. So going back to the earlier comment, how can we make online learning a little easier? Well, um, it, it really requires as a starting point, a relationship. And, and I read just recently some research about how um, students who were in a regular classroom then started to, to work with their, uh, the same teacher, but in an online environment. And the assumption that the teachers made very often was that, oh, I already know these students I, and I've got a good relationship with them. For whatever reason, it didn't seem to translate or doesn't seem to translate um, if you're, you're going in that particular direction. It's almost as if you have to start over again. So um, uh, I can't uh, emphasize how important creating that, that connection with your learner from the beginning. So as I said, I, I gave you a little scenario about how um, uh, I lived through a, a situation when I was in university where I had a, an absolutely boring uh, uh, professor. Well, you can have boring anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the, um, uh, in the online uh, setting. So if we, we go to, to yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead, Carolina. I just you want to do you want to go get to our, our third yeah. question to what I'm answer. ready to go yeah. to number I'm ready to go to number Perfect. three. Perfect. So just going to what you were saying about online. So what are the most common myths about e-learning? Oh wow. Well, um, I wonder if I, I'm sure people uh, have a very very strong opinions about uh, online learning. In many cases, it's because they've been exposed to poor online learning or e-learning. Um, the f first myth really is that. Um, online learning is what you do when you can't do face-to-face. -face. In other words, it's the poor cousin to real-time face-to-face um, -face classes. In, in all cases, face-to-face -face is better. Well, that's just not true. We've seen countless cases where some kids actually thrive in an online environment. Um, uh, other kids, and, and many of these kids also don't do well in, in classroom settings. Uh, simply because it might be intimidating, it could be bullying, it could be uh, adolescent angst and insecurity. Um, but the truth of the matter is that uh, online learning, again, like everything else, done well, doesn't have to be the, uh, uh, the poor cousin to face-to-face. Uh, -face. And that, as I said, really challenges a lot of people who you know, say, well, I, that's not true, it's always better in a face-to-face. -face. Well, not always, and, and uh, we can get, uh, come to that a little bit more later. The other thing is that um, online learning doesn't have to be cold and impersonal. You heard uh, Peggy Jolet before uh, uh, speaking up and, and describing herself. Well, we could tell you countless stories about some of our students online who uh, uh, became very close friends. In fact, we have one true story of uh, a boy and a girl who uh, took classes online with us and who eventually uh, met up uh, as a result of that, uh, um, in, in the real world, and actually ended up getting married. But the uh, so personal relationships uh, and, and becoming uh, warm and fuzzy is absolutely possible in in an online environment. Uh, it just doesn't have to be cold. And, and in fact, again, I'll come back and say that one of the big advantages of distance, in in some cases, is that it provides a certain level of anonymity. Students are sometimes ready to open up in a way that they wouldn't in a face-to-face -face environment. Um, and we see this, of course, uh, unfortunately, in, in some negative ways with uh, social media, but it's not necessarily uh, true. Another common misconception about online learning is that it's just for gifted kids or that um, it's, you have to be really good with technology. Um, many of you probably already know, we uh, uh, tutor thousands of kids and have taught thousands and thousands of kids over the years uh, at LEARN. And um, it, you don't have to be a, a, a tech whiz. Um, most of our, our students in, who come on for the tutoring within five, 10, 15 minutes, they're, they're right into it. And uh, uh, very soon the technology disappears and, and it just becomes a learning situation. So you don't have to be gifted and you don't have to be great with technology, but your technology has to be robust there's no question about it. if you're using lousy platforms and lousy uh, or, or if your connectivity is poor, then you're, you're going to have some challenges. But uh, as a rule, if you if you've got good techno, uh, good platforms and you're well set up, 
um, it, uh, you don't have to be the, uh, the technology expert. In, in we had to, uh, actually, Michael, we have two more replies to our, sure. A2, our A2 question, our, All um, right. <laughs> our, 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 our second question, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so we have here Audrey McLaren, A2. I had some teachers who only ever lectured. Some were better <laughs> at it than others. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And then we have another reply. Online distance learning can combined within uh, class learning and support. Um, we have also uh, Carrie sure. Kuhl who's joining us with her uh, students in uh, uh, chemistry and science. So uh, hi, Carrie. Thanks for joining uh, in on the on the chat. Yeah, and, and listen, there's a time and a place for for lecturing. In fact, sometimes we we, we refer to it as um, uh, micro learning. A, a lecture or um, information sharing, content sharing, in small and short bursts can actually be very effective if it's complemented by activities and uh, uh, it's integrated into the, the learning process. It's, you never want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's not bad in and of itself. It's just it needs to be contextualized within a larger learning uh, framework. So that, again, keep in mind, you establish the relationship first, then we start to build on that. Um, and, and everything I keep hearing is about, well, getting to know the student and the student getting to know you. Remember, uh, we're, we're, we're people dealing with people. Do you want to go to question four, uh, Carolina? Yep. So question four, if you were back in high school and you were asked to work on a project or choose of your choosing, what would it be? So Michael, what would it be? What would your project be? Uh, okay, so uh, uh, again, uh, I skipped over my slide number three and I'm gonna come back to it in a second. But I remember when I was in high school, I was in a science fair and here it is again, I'm being a Weisenheimer, but um, I remember that my science fair project dealt with tetrahedral bonding and carbon molecules. So uh, I remember all about that because I was actually doing it. I was in, engaged in the process. Um, our uh, chemistry teacher was fantastic and uh, he uh, spent time with us, showing us and explaining things to us. And then also brought it to us, uh, brought it uh, to life for us. So yeah. Um, I really enjoyed it. And I wonder uh, amongst yourselves, you know, if you uh, the listening audience, the Twitter audience here, if you were going back into high school, what kind of projects would you like to work on? And I wonder why too, you would want to go back uh, to that. So maybe we can- I guess we'll, we we'll get some answers. Yeah, get we'll some answers as we go along. We get. Yeah, for yeah. sure, and I'll share them. Now, uh, actually, and one of the things that I skipped over and I want to come back to now was that, um, the point I'm trying to make is that very often um, a classroom teacher or an online teacher wants to try to do all the work. Um, lecturing is basically where we're doing all the work. Uh, uh, the teacher stands in front and uh, as Charles Dickens said, and those of you who know me have heard me say this before, he talked about one teacher, he's called Thomas Gradgrind, and he, he defined himself as a cannon loaded to the muzzle with facts ready to blow the imagination out of the minds of children. Well, that's what we get very often. And in that situation, it's the teacher who goes in, they've got their notes, their preps, da, 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 and they do all the work. And, and really, it's not the way we learn, is it? Um, so we have to just keep this in mind that as we look at, pro the reason I, I brought up the whole notion of project is that um, we need to get our learners, be they in a, in a regular classroom or in an online setting, we need to get them doing things because that's how we learn. My go-to example in that situation is that the first time you learned how to use a Word or Excel, um, if someone was telling you what to do, you really didn't learn that much, but you did learn once you started to do it yourself. And then if you had a question, well, how do I do this and how do I do that? You were always able to go back to the teacher who was a guide you know, in the whole process. But uh, ultimately we learn, we develop our competencies through, um, through doing, not through listening. Listening is just a, a small, a, a, exclusively, it's just a small part of it. Just wanted to remind everybody that's uh, joining in our, on our Twitter, if you just joined in, please go ahead and uh, reply, uh, put your answers in on our Twitter account. Remember to uh, specify which question you're answering, a one, two, three, or four. We're at uh, question four right now. So um, don't forget, just jump in anytime and put in your answers. We'd love to see what you wanna share with us and, and what, you want, you, what, what you have to say. Mm -hmm. uh, Question five, we said, what are the oh, top- Oh, actually, uh, Michael, oh. sorry. I, we just got an answer uh, for question three from 
<laughs> Trisha Clancar, A3. Uh, so there's here, this is her reply. It's easy, quick. Teachers do nothing and kids are fine alone. Just play a recording. They will get it. <laughs> um, actually, there's a lot of a lot of people who uh, really do believe that, and and there's a, a research to support it. But uh, uh, if if we go too deep in that, we'll, we'll end up in a, a little bit of a of a situation. But a quick little uh, background on that: you probably are familiar with the um, uh, research project that was done called "A Computer in a Wall," and they uh, actually uh, I think it was in New Delhi or it might have been Mumbai. Uh, one of the researchers simply took a computer, um, put it uh, inside a, a wall in a, uh, an alley in, a, in one of these uh, streets in, in New Delhi, and, and, and he left it in that particular place at, uh, at a level where kids were able to use it and see it. Um, and, uh, they, uh, and the kids actually, without ever having touched a computer, knowing what it was, uh, they learned how to use it. They learned how to do it uh, entirely on their own. Um, and the, uh, the adult, the, the teachers uh, ended up uh, just working as facilitators and, and, and supporting the learning. Uh, so uh, uh, I agree with that, but uh, uh, with that particular comment, the issue is uh, I don't know if our system is quite ready to abandon <laughs> uh, <laughs> traditional roles. I'd like to see some serious structural and systemic changes, but, and, and we've been working hard on that. But what we found is that uh, people do a lot of talk about change, but they're not quite ready to do it. So uh, um, that might be another Twitter chat. Uh, series, yeah, you know? another another topic of conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually have another response for uh, the uh, third question about the uh, most common myths uh, about online learning uh, from uh, D work and play. Uh, so, uh, but the reply is a common myth is that it is impersonal. What are your thoughts about that, Mark Michael? Is it really impersonal? <laughs> It's, uh, we've been in schools where uh, they've got, uh, the, the, the schools are just like factories, you know, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 students. Um, uh, they, they go in and out of a classroom and uh, it can be very cold and impersonal in that setting as well. We've all lived that. So it's not unique to the online environment. Um, and, and if online was strictly cold and impersonal, well, uh, I don't think our social media would work because very often we use it for sometimes uh, very good uh, reasons. You know, we communicate with people. Um, uh, I use an app called House Party and uh, uh, I'm online with my brothers and uh, relatives all over the world and we have a, a great time doing this. So it can be warm and fuzzy and it can be uh, touching you in an important way. It's just really, you have to want to do that. Um, and you have to have it in, intentional. Uh, it can't be accidental. I'll go back and say, start with creating a relationship, find some commonalities between uh, yourself. And, and, uh, and I know people are gonna be saying, well, this is just a uh, pedagogy 101. And you're right, it is. It's just pedagogy 101. It's simple, common sense. What works and is effective in a regular classroom is essentially the same thing in, in an online environment. Um, what doesn't work in an online environment, and then we'll, we'll maybe address that a little bit more later, is when we do um, uh, video capsules, we uh, post a video capsule uh, where the teacher lectures and, and talks about something for five, 10, 15 minutes, and then they send uh, a, a, a bunch of questions out to the students and they say, all right, now that you've listened to me talk, I want you to read this, I want you to do that, and I want you to answer the questions. Well. I mean, how boring can that be? You have not made any attempt to, uh, uh, to engage your, your learner in a cognitive way. So question number five really Actually, answers- Actually, wait, before we get to question yeah, number five, sure, Michael, yeah, yeah, we yeah. just got in a, a reply for a response for the question number four. So oh, okay. <laughs> um, about our high school project. So in high school, I always enjoyed group projects and still love teamwork. Well, yeah, I mean, why not? Teamwork, high school projects, it's the same thing. It's it's collaborative, uh, learn yeah. by doing and work by doing, yeah. Well, again, those of you familiar with Piaget and Vygotsky uh, and, and social constructivism know that learning occurs naturally in a collaborative environment in which we exchange and we share uh, with, with one another. So, duh, you know, uh, when we know all these things, we should be applying them. Um, when we isolate students and we don't uh, uh, allow them to interact, it, it's not very effective. So um, 
I keep coming back to, well, how can I make uh, online learning less onerous for, for myself? Um, drive the, the students to projects and, and developing competencies that are aligned with um, what your, your course uh, material would be and, and, and flip your classes so that they're, they're getting the content, they're getting all the, 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 uh, the material that they need. You can uh, enrich that in the, uh, in the online real-time session. And, and by the way, this is something we'll talk about uh, different ways of doing things, but um, you, you, we have so many options. I'm jumping around a little bit and we'll come back to, uh, uh, to all of this, but uh, yeah, collaborative work is absolutely critical. Uh, to the learning process, and and um, at Learn we have we use a platform called Zoom. Before that, we used uh, eSpace, and then Zen Live, and uh, I think Wimbo going way way back. We always had uh, breakout rooms in there, so we took our students with uh, so we had uh, twenty students in the class, and we break them up into uh, groups of four or five, and have them work on 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 different projects. It's always been core to to our whole approach, our uh, the, the pedagogy. When people say, "What's the Learn platform?" It's not so much a Learn platform as it is our, our philosophy, our approach to, uh, to what we do on, in the online environment. So we got another uh, reply for a project. Actually, somebody actually sent us their project. <laughs> ah, cool. You, so uh, really nice. Uh, Mrs. Kuehl, she sent us a, uh, it would probably be something like this kind of project. And she sent us a YouTube video of building the perfect squirrel proof bird feeder. <laughs> well, I guess they've been watching our uh, our uh, our swing into uh, spring series and our uh, webinars with bird protection Quebec. Because okay, like so what? time out, time out, just to let you know <laughs> that this morning there was a uh, a little feature about uh, uh, this guy who is from the Jet Propulsion uh, Lab in uh, I think it's in Houston. I'm not sure. I think it's in Houston anyway with NASA, and um, uh, he tried to. Uh, bird or uh, squirrel proof his bird feeders was now able to do it. I just want to let you know that if any of you are interested, I have a, a, a something I put together and I've uh, squirrel uh, proofed my uh, uh, my bird feeders. That's another uh, Twitter. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, okay. Kate for sending us that uh, yeah, reply and that bird feeder. Uh, absolutely, video. So, Love it. So let, let me then go to question five because I, I know the time is uh, is moving uh -huh. ahead, and and really the question five is like. What do we do? What are the strategies to make online learning engaging? And, and, and again, I apologize because this is just a one uh, little uh, Twitter chat and I'm not gonna be able to address things in, in depth, but I, I'll come back and say, create a relationship, get to know the students and let the students get to know you. Um, uh, I told you about my bird feeder. I told you about my, my science fair projects. You're telling me about your project. And, and again, it's, this is a micro, micro example of what we need to do, but you need to create that relationship. You've got to remember they're humans, they're young learners, and we're people too. You know, it's, keep in mind as, as teachers, you know, when they see you in the grocery store, they always say, hey, sir, what are you doing in here? Oh, guess what? I, I eat too. You know, but yeah, we're, we're people, you know, we're all people. And that, and that, that kind of thing is important. Obviously, you want to engage cognitively and emotionally. So um, once you start to develop a, a, a relationship, engaging cognitively simply means that if you're going at things in a, a, a manner that's too abstract, that doesn't rely, that doesn't resonate with them, you're, you're gonna lose them quickly. So you've got to absolutely find a way to make what you're doing relevant to, what, uh, to their lives, meaningful. It's gotta be languaged and, 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 and phrased in a way that um, they can make those connections. Part of the reason that I, I asked you again earlier on, think about what uh, a situation where you had a teacher lecturing at you as I, I gave you before. Um, you're, you're looking to engage cognitively and you're uh, based on the fact that you have a relationship. Um, emotionally as well, it's okay to have fun in there, by the way. Um, learning requires, by definition, learning requires an effort. Um, no effort, no learning. You know, if it, if to get it to fire uh, and wire, you need to to create some uh, uh, some energy and some effort. However, it doesn't have to be um, uh, painful. So uh, look at finding out ways that the, uh, you can uh, make your students happy. You know, that they're happy in the in the sense that the, um, when they're they're doing a video game, for example, they're going to work really hard at finding a, a way to get to by this particular obstacle, another obstacle. Hard is not the issue. Engaging and, and, and having 
fun that they can say that, well, listen, I've done this. Um, and and uh, they're, uh, they have a sense of um, accomplishment. The other thing, obviously, is, and it's what I'm doing right here is pacing, avoid talking too much. Uh, I, I'm trying to uh, not no. talk too much, but to, <laughs> in, in this particular context, but um, take your time. Typically, you want to avoid being a talking head, as I am right now. But, um, and part of the reason is that uh, on, in the online environment, especially if it's, you're doing it synchronously, um, you end up becoming like a television uh, screen for them. Um, televisions generate alpha brain waves in, in, uh, in the, the viewer. Uh, uh, computers don't necessarily do that if you're interacting and engaging with, uh, with what's going on on the, scheme, on the screen. So it's important that you do things in, in, in short bursts. You can explain something, move on, but you can't go at it for, for, your, uh, for too long. You've got to make sure that you, you uh, pace it, you uh, go back and forth and avoid, as I said, talking too much. The next point, a, obviously. Yeah, yeah, we have some some replies to the sure. uh, fifth uh, question, uh, question yeah, number yeah. Five regarding the strategies. Uh, mm -hmm. So we have here an answer from Audrey McLaren um, using tools that allow for live, instant, two way communication. Example of oh. Desmos, she gives us actually some uh, examples. Uh, so Desmos, uh, Classic, and Graspable Math. Okay. Uh, yeah, Thank absolutely. you, Audrey, for sharing that with us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And uh, when we get to the um, uh, the Twitter chat where our teachers are going to be uh, uh, highlighted, uh, the learn teachers, they'll be able to get into a, a little more uh, uh, depth on some of these things. But absolutely, yeah. immediacy is critical. Uh, just again, when we come to assessment, if we wanted to really benefit our students, it's got to be really fast. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and, and so if you can create a sense of immediacy and feedback, yes, this is good. And you know, you've got to work a little bit more on that. Um, that really helps to guide the, the learning process. So a uh, uh, 100% agree, uh, uh, Audrey, that the sense of immediacy is absolutely critical. Before we um, get to question six, Michael, yeah. we have another reply for question number sure. five uh, from Peggy Drolle. Um, My top strategy is to make online engaging, telling students they matter, encourage SS to fail. Uh, flip class allows this. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, again, we, we talked about making an effort and, and working through things. Uh, you don't always succeed the first time through. And, and, and again, we have to encourage uh, that kind of, uh, of work. Uh, when it's done collaboratively and you've created an environment that allows for this col uh, safe collaborative work to happen, it's really, it's good. Uh, and, it, and it's very beneficial. Peggy's comments really highlight, again, the notion of relationship. You need to have, it doesn't happen without the relationship. So again, uh, all of that's important. So collaborative work. I just want to go on quickly. Actually, here. talking about your collaborative uh, work, uh, we just received another reply before you get to question <laughs> six, Michael. Uh, okay. From um, uh, this one is from. Uh, oh my gosh, uh, I don't see who it's from. from. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't see who it's from. Sorry about that. Um, oh yeah, Carrie Kuehl. Sorry about that. Uh, making real world connections to science co concepts. Flipping my classes allows time for active learning and collaborative activities during the live session. Absolutely. So that's, that's exactly uh, what, uh, yeah, yeah, you were talking yeah, about yeah. the collaborative uh, approach. <laughs> so let's exactly get to that. Okay, I just want to uh, quickly just want to mention critical reflection. Um, uh, in an online environment, you need to get people to stop and think about what they're doing. And we'll come to that a little bit more. Rely on effective pedagogy. You know, um, teachers are notorious for not looking up and considering research but the research can guide and direct you. It's not just ivory tower stuff. Most research is done in the field with, with real-time teachers. So I, again, big believer in, in going back and looking at what research can guide us and inform us. Um, and the last thing I just wanna make uh, talk about effective online strategies, your technology cannot be cumbersome. Um, we're right now using Zoom, but we're tied to Slack, we're tied to Twitter, we're tied to Facebook and it's just transparent. We're not thinking about it. And that's the important part here. All right. I'm sorry, so, uh, Carolina. Question six. Yeah. So let's get to question six. What All approach right. approaches can help a student transition to an online setting? Well, uh, again, I want to, I brought that question up because people say, well, what does that really mean? When you go into um, uh, uh, an online class, 
uh, you're still dealing with a student, but now they're in a, in a different a different context. And so for me, you have to consider the student uh, exactly that in, in a holistic uh, manner. Um, you have to really get them to, you have to be mindful, I guess is the word I'm talking about. And I know that uh, this year in our online classes, we introduced mindfulness as one of the, the important steps in this. And actually what I'd ask you to do, all of you who are listening in and following on Twitter right now, I want you to stop for a second and uh, stand up, even if it's for 30 seconds or 10 seconds, I'm gonna stand up myself, all right? And yes, uh, this is why I'm wearing pants today because uh, as I'm standing up, I figure it'd be healthy. Take a deep breath, um, uh, look around you, um, close your eyes. And again, we're doing this in a super accelerated fashion. Um, and now we'll sit down and, uh, again. Now, if you have a big black dog sitting behind you, you could take a second and, and rub your big black dog. <laughs> the, the point is, you know, and I mentioned this, is that you're right. We don't want to see students or children sitting in front of a computer screen for hours and hours on end, even though they already do it. You know, the, the, the screen might be small, but it's still not healthy. So um, as we look at uh, trans, uh, transitioning to an online classroom or a setting, we, we want to understand that they are, are going to look at this. It might be new, it might be scary to them. On the other hand, it might not be at all. You know, so uh, just step back, look at the situation and assess what you're, what you're doing there. All right. So we're um, getting uh, to uh, question seven. All righty. So, uh, yeah, question we, seven. Okay, yeah. so uh, it was write two or three words that describe how we best learn, mm -hmm. and uh, I think we've actually gotten lots of lots of answers uh, already on that. So we can maybe go fairly quickly on it. Um, but uh, I think Carrie just before mentioned, um, make sure that we we're talking about real world situations. If we're doing chemistry, well, chemistry is a part of our our, our world. Uh, in every way, shape, and form, be it cooking, uh, uh, gardening, it doesn't matter. It, uh, it's, it's everywhere. So making learning authentic and relevant. And if we, we uh, make room for curiosity, um, I think that those are really, really critical, uh, critical things for us. Uh, and we can't lose sight of that. Um, and I know if it's a, I, I, I can hear a lot of teachers already telling me, this is all well and fine, but I still have to get through the curriculum. Um, a lot of research has shown that when you, you actually get them involved in projects and doing things, not only do they cover the content and cover it uh, uh, well and completely, they, they score well on exams and they retain for a long time what they're doing, uh, uh, the, the whole process. Um, as I said, tetrahedral bonding and carbon molecules. It's really the one that I, I, I use as an, il an illustration. We got to get them learning about the real world and, and uh, what it has to do with the, uh, everything uh, that goes on about us. Um, what's our next question? I'm just trying to think here, because I, I see, all right. The learn, think, about the learner profile? If you're the going learner to... profile, yeah. oh, okay, well, yeah. Many courses right now, and this is really uh, mm -hmm. where I'm, I'm gonna sound a little critical, is that um, in the United States, um, we have Betsy DeVos who actually is um, uh, the secretary of education, but she's also the owner of, or at least was the former owner of many, many uh, virtual schools. Their virtual schools actually are just like um, uh, digital courses online. They send them out to, to the students and then the students are basically expected to uh, follow the instructions on the course uh, as, as it's expressed there and go through it on their own, they can maybe occasionally uh, meet up with a, a teacher uh, to, to get some questions and answers going over. What they have done is they've tried to find a cheap and inexpensive way to offer education uh, to uh, people across the, the, the country. Um, we see a lot of what I call course in the can uh, approaches. Uh, if I put enough material into a course, uh, uh, then it, it'll be fantastic. Uh, it's a it's 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 e-learning. It's on distance education. It's it's actually it's, it's it ends up being garbage. Uh, the kids don't relate to it. Uh, um, we might as well just mail them a math book or a chemistry book. 
uh, it's about as how as effective it is as it is. The truth of the matter is that if we look at the way um, our learner profiles, only five percent of the student profile, the students uh, generally, learn on their own independently. They have all the self-regulatory skills uh, that are needed. There's uh, they have enough discipline. Um, and they're able to, to uh, provide enough focus to, to go, thing, uh, go through the course on their own. We've all seen these kids in our classrooms and, and in, in our lives. You just give it to them and they're going to run with it. They don't, um, as someone said before, do we really need a teacher? These kids don't need a teacher. Um, and so for these courses in a can where we um, uh, do video capsules, send them and ask them to answer questions and follow up. Well, that really, it's okay for about 5% of the student population. The truth of the matter is it doesn't work for most uh, of them. Uh, most of us need to be interacting in, in a context with other learners and, and in an ongoing basis. Remember, once upon a time, we were 15 years old. And if, if I had to just look at a screen and, and uh, uh, look at a video and answer a question, it would be as boring as, as can be. So uh, we have to be honest and recognize that we want to engage them. We want to uh, get them to go through all of this. We have to find more effective ways of doing it than just uh, sending it to them and, and getting upset when they when they they drop out. I spoke with a, a teacher who's from uh, um, La Nozier today, and she's been teaching in a French school system, and she's been teaching online, providing these video capsules, and uh, she only has five, maybe ten students out of 140 show up for her classes and do it. There's a lot of reasons for that. But uh, he's, I, she said, I don't know why they're not doing it. Well, I know why, it's, it's boring. I, I, I wouldn't want to do it, it's uh, not, not my cup of tea. So that's the problem. Distance education, online education is very often associated with that trash, you know, mm -hmm. where it's cost effective. It, uh, it uh, satisfies the interests and needs of uh, a, a lot of people, but that's not what we do and that's not what we promote. And that's not the way online education uh, should be done. So, we have uh, some yeah. replies, Michael, to uh, yes. the two previous questions. So, oh, okay. so question six and seven. Um, right. Question yeah. six, uh, reassuring students that they are not alone, taking the time to make connections to students. Yeah, yeah. And another reply is uh, make participation safe, respectful, and fun. So that's yeah. like, uh, you know, that's very, yeah. very important. In, to, uh, um, in design thinking, the step number one is uh, in the whole design thinking process is empathy. Uh, empathy really is something that we need to teach to our teachers and we need to uh, teach our students as well. Uh, and, and we have to feel for them, what is it like to be in this kind of situation? Can you imagine how, how tough uh, it, it is uh, being thrown uh, a course in a can and expected to, uh, to reply uh, to do, uh, and, and follow through? Because if you don't, you're going to fail. You won't pass the exam, and you won't get on to into the SEJA program, or you won't go on. This puts a lot of needless stress on the students. And, and again, as I said, ultimately they they don't learn. They remember long enough to write an exam. Uh, we also have uh, received a, a reply to our question number five. Um, not to sound like a threat, just fact <laughs> of transparency. Each participant needs to bring it to the session. There are no spectators. Discuss the expectation that everyone needs to be a responsible participant. Yeah, well, yeah, that makes sense. And of, of course, and 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 here's what online education does allow, and and really is, uh, I would say, an advantage, is that it allows for personalization. It allows for tracking a lot more uh, effectively than than in the regular classroom situation. So yeah, you know, uh, we want to reach all of them. We we can do it, uh, and an online education done properly um offers that that opportunity uh, to do it so uh, yeah i'm a big believer in personalizing education we're not we're not all the same we don't all learn at the same pace we don't all learn um quite the same way um and we need to be able to do this and i think in an online environment um we have uh, we're given much many more opportunities mm -hmm. uh, uh, to do this that's right um so we have uh, two more replies for um question number seven before we get to our question yeah. number eight um so learner profile how do you best learn engagement and portments of participation six what we've been saying the last uh, couple of minutes yeah, yeah. No, collaborative approach uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely absolutely agree absolutely agree with that and that's fantastic important, uh, important yeah. to 
have a, so, the opportunity to participate. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. another um, reply is how do we best uh, learn socially connecting to what interests us? Obviously, yeah, if you're interested, you're going to be engaged, you're going to be connected, yeah. you're going to participate. Relevance, authenticity. And by mm -hmm. the way, our curriculum and, and the design of our curriculum in Quebec really was based on that. It was based on authentic, real world learning. Um, we, we got lost along the way, unfortunately, but if we were ever able to get back to it, that's exactly what we need to be doing. It's all about that. And it's about building competencies. Um, and, uh, the content follows the competency, mm -hmm. you know? And so we, we have to re, rethink, re-explore a lot of that. But as I said, that's another tw uh, Twitter series. Uh, <laughs> it's great to see how everything you know, ties in, you know, the whole There's, approach. You, you can't, you can't segregate one from no, the other. Exactly. And that's, that's why it's a, again, we, we have to look at a systems approach to all of this. It's not, nothing, nothing can be done independently. So question number eight, number um, eight. what types of online education and are, are available and are offered? Well, again, I, I tried to make it such that it was, um, uh, simple to retain. There's three general categories. There's synchronous, and simply that means it's real time. Like what we're doing now, this is a synchronous real time delivery. Uh, I'm interacting with you, and, and and typically if we were doing a little different in one of our regular classes, you'd be interacting with me, and I would be able to do it. But we're we're getting real time feedback uh, via Twitter. So um, yeah, that's synchronous and it's real time. Then we have obviously asynchronous, which is uh, basically uh, uh, designing uh, a class, a program, uh, so that it can be delivered in, in an anytime, anywhere uh, format. Um, and, and this is a, a tougher one in, in some ways, but uh, when it's um, blended with other uh, approaches, other devices, it can be uh, very effective. The last one is um, the blended uh, learning. Well, one of the things that I'm proposing and, and that I suggested to our uh, ministry and our school board is that we next year start looking at more blended learning into our, in our, in our classes. Um, and what I mean by that is that uh, a teacher can be, uh, who's a remote teacher, can be interacting with students in the classroom in real time. I had um, someone tell me today, same teacher, by the way, from a, uh, and she told me that at their school board in the French school board, they had um, 40 posts that were left unfilled uh, just for uh, English second language. Um, there are solutions to this. Uh, I want to, and I asked uh, Rob, if you can show a little video here that lasts about 45, 50 seconds. This is uh, taken from one of the uh, classes that um, uh, we have in Thailand right now. Uh, just uh, I'm gonna just uh, uh, give some a setting here. Um, we now have 5,000 schools that we're working with in Thailand. That's 5,000 schools. Just so you understand, in Quebec, we have 325 schools for the English community. And I think about another uh, maybe seven or 800 on the French side, something like that. I'm not sure, maybe more than that on the French side. But um, uh, on the English side, we have 325. Here uh, in, in Thailand, we're working with 5,000 schools. Here's, here's a class, they're learning English as a second language, well, actually English as a third language because they speak Thai, Yawi, and, and, and English. And this is a program that I designed and, and, and started up in 2013. And, uh, uh, but I want to show you what, what cognitive and emotional engagement is and how, how, how it works. Okay, Rob, fire away. <laughs> So I think you can see here, the kids are having a good time. They're learning, they're engaged with the teacher. Um, I don't think it's cold and impersonal. I, I think you've got cognitive engagement here. You see relationship that's been clearly established. Um, and, and incidentally, uh, that's an elementary school. These kids are, I think, probably in grade three or four, if I'm not mistaken. So um, 
yeah, it, it can work. It's a little tougher in the elementary school uh, sector, but absolutely it can work. And uh, uh, I believe that done properly, um, we can offer our, our, our kids a lot of uh, uh, possibilities. And so the last thing I would say here is that effective online teaching requires preparation. If you ask our online teachers, they'll, they'll say, oh yeah, lots and lots of work, lots of preparation. It's not easy, but on the other hand, it's very fulfilling. I think that it, it's a very successful. Our students, uh, our success rate speaks for itself at LEARN. Our students generally do very well, probably more better than the average uh, on our uh, year-end exams. Uh, our dropout rate is uh, negligible, uh, nil. So we've got, we've got great results, um, but it, it comes from the fact that we're de dedicated to doing it right. And it's not about a course in the can. It's really about uh, uh, addressing the, the needs and interests of the students in an online environment. So what's e-learning? It's just learning with an e in front of it. It still remains learning and it requires a, a good pedagogy and good planning. So while we wait for um, the some replies for question eight, um, we're gonna go to our last question, which is, uh, what is your takeaway from this Twitter chat? So please send in your answers, indicate A9, and don't forget the hashtag eLearn at chat. While you're doing that, I, I think uh, uh, my own takeaway is that, oh, gee, I would have loved to have spent more time on a whole bunch of different things, but I know that the, um, we said we were going to try and keep this to about 45, 50 minutes. Um, and it's also, uh, I'm competing against a hot sunny day. And I asked <laughs> Carolina earlier, I said, who's going to want to come in and listen to, to me, you know, do, uh, talk about e-learning. Uh, and I'm glad that uh, uh, some of you did. I really appreciated that. Um, she said, well, they're just going to do it to get out of the heat. So that, that makes me feel a little better knowing that uh, I'm, I'm uh, compensating for some heat outside. Anyways, you could, it's online, right? So you could be anywhere and outside, inside, you could join the chat wherever you are, even in your car. I mean, as long as you're parked and not, <laughs> not, not texting while you're, while driving. you're driving. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, so we received a, a reply for uh, Q7. So meaningful tasks, again, uh, you know, it's all has to do with being able to have your students engaged, teachers engaging. So yeah, meaningful facts, things, things that interest them. Thank mm -hmm. you for, the, for that, that comment and that reply. So I guess we're, we're at the end of our Twitter chat, uh, Michael, and um, we haven't received that. Well, we're probably gonna be getting some, some more replies, but you know, um, yeah, actually we just got one for question eight. It's new from so many of us. I'm using my students to experiment all kinds of activities during our short online sessions. Mm -hmm. um, students love it. Some things work the, uh, done and some don't. Teachers need to be willing to try things makes for best learning. And you know what? That's a, what a great uh, way to end this. I, I, I think that's fabulous. You're right. You know, I, 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 I think we stress so often, but I mean, I, I'll go back and personal story. I, I taught back at Laval Catholic High School in the, uh, uh, my God, in the prehistoric days uh, in the seventies. And um, I, I know that uh, what I thought I was God's gift to education. Um, and uh, I, but I re recognized too, that uh, I made all kinds of mistakes as I went along. And uh, uh, I think what we need to do is understand that the, uh, uh, it's okay. We're, it's a learning process for all of us. Uh, I always say, if you're, if you're not willing to learn, you're not ready to teach. So uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, and I think that if you, you develop that relationship with your students, your students are going to be okay with this as well. Uh, there's a, a, a question of trust and they're going to say, hey, you know, uh, uh, sir, miss, uh, I get it. I think this is good. Oh, all right, that didn't work. It's really okay. Um, have fun with it. Just keep in mind you want to engage with them, you know, Put yourself in their place, because that's what, very often what our teachers, they have a tough time doing. Put so, yourself in their, in their position. So Michael, you were worried about people not joining in? Well, someone just answered our A9. It was raining where I am during this chat. It was nice to engage with you all. <laughs> <laughs> so that was Yay. your takeaway. So at least she was able to uh, join us. 
Well, uh, on a final note, I'd like to thank everyone who joined in onto our chat tonight today. Um, thank you for your replies. Thank you for for you know uh, your sharing your stories and sharing your 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 all your information. Um, please continue on and just send us any any answers to the questions. We'd love to read them later on. Um, so I just want to leave off with uh, oh another answer. Let's see. Good teaching is good teaching is good teaching. Yeah, I, we agree. <laughs> Bravo. That's yes. right. So anyways, yeah. tune in next Tuesday on June 2nd um, when Learn's virtual campus and online teachers join Dr. Michael Canuel in moderation to answer participants' questions. So we look forward to seeing you next week and um, please continue to chat and uh, be engaging and just share, share, share. We love to hear, we love to read them. Thanks everyone. Bye everyone.